All right, Entree Architect community, it's 4 p.m. Eastern, which means it's time for the Entree Architect Context and Clarity Live conversation for Thursday, March 24th, 2022. Thanks for joining us today. As you get here, say hi. Let us know that you're here and let us know where you're joining the conversation from. If we've never met before, my name is Jeff. I'm in Indianapolis and I come here every weekday afternoon for one reason so that we can find clarity around the things that matter most to you, the architect. It doesn't matter if you're the employee of a firm or you own your own firm. Maybe you've circled a date on the calendar and you said, 2022 is my year and you're on the runway to starting your own thing. Or maybe you have owned your own firm for a year or 10 years or 28 years, and you're starting to rethink or reimagine what that firm could or maybe even should be. All of the topics that we cover, one topic every day, they all fall under the broad umbrella of the business of architecture, and they're all the need-to-know topics for the success of small firm architects just like you. So thanks for joining us today. I was always on these momentous Context and Clarity Live occasions. I'm joined by my co-host, Catherine McPhail. Hi, Catherine. Hello, Jeff. Where are you today? Today, I'm in the same old place. It sounds, it might sound a little different. I'm still here, yeah. I just say, I just, um, they accepted our offer on our new, our house though. So I know where I'm going. Very nice. Congratulations. Yep. It's good to know yep. where you're going. <laughs> I'm yep. sure that uh sure that's a nice feeling. Yeah. Good. Yep. Sure. Yeah. And now they're painting Very my good. house and I had to take down this little this little reminder I had to myself says good <laughs> luck. And apparently that's too much fun. The realtor said I had to take it down. <laughs> you, you need to find a fun loving realtor. And yeah. Or just take it with me. I'll have luck. Forget about those well. other people. Anyway, you do. Yeah, so, you're not yeah. wishing them good luck. Okay. No. Not anymore. <laughs> right. Well, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad the stress of looking has gone away. Yeah, it's nice. And for everybody else out there, let's see. I'm looking looking at the comments right now. I'm on my screen. I see John Jones in first. Which, for those of you who are new around here, the first person in to Context and Clarity wins an award. And the award that we give away is the John Kenny Memorial Crocheted Bathtub Award. Uh, John Jones, congratulations. You're the winner of today's Crocheted Bathtub Award. John's joining us from Westport, Connecticut, right across the street from Starbucks. Uh, so thanks for joining us today, John. Chris Novelli, welcome back from Massachusetts. Benito, welcome. Thanks for the wave from Atlanta. Mark R. LePage, welcome from Waxhaw, North Carolina. Glad you're joining us. And Diego is over there. He's on YouTube today and uh, joining us from Nicaragua. Great to have you with us today, Diego and Christian from Ithaca, New York. Rod says uh, every time he sees Carberry, he thinks Cadbury and wants some chocolate. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, as you know, we stock our green room with green m and so I don't know if that's chocolate enough for you, but chocolate might be a theme for the day. Uh, Daniel Stewart, welcome back. Glad you're joining us. And um, Kurt from Flint, Michigan is also joining us. Both of them, Daniel and Kurt, both on the YouTube side. Uh, looks like a lot of Facebook and YouTube right now. Thanks and hello to everybody out there, whether you're on YouTube or LinkedIn or Twitch or Twitter or Facebook. Glad all of you are joining us today. If you happen to run into trouble, if you're somewhere on Facebook, as a for instance, and you're commenting, but you don't see your comment showing up on the right-hand side of the screen right now, it's because you are in a private Facebook group and because of privacy rules, which we respect, um, you have to give Facebook permission to communicate with Restream, which is the platform that we use here for these simulcasts. So there is a URL in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen right now, chat.restream.io slash FB, like Facebook. If you take that URL, type it into your um, your window, your search window up at the top. A couple of clicks later, you give Facebook permission to talk to Restream, and you'll start uh, showing up here. Your comments will start showing up over on the right hand side of the screen. So that's that's the trick. If you're commenting right now, um, you have to renew that every once in a while. I don't know if it's six months or whatever it is. So maybe. Maybe if that's happening, you need to renew it, or maybe you're new around here. And if so, welcome. Glad you're here. Just use that URL. Go through that. Uh, like I said, I think it's only two clicks, and uh, and you'll start showing up. You'll join the conversation here with us, and uh, we appreciate you being here. 
I've been looking forward to this conversation for a while. Uh, we were talking bef- backstage before we went live, and um, our guest, who I'll introduce to you here in a moment, asked how I found where I found the book, and I said, "Well, Matthew Ray Scott, who's a friend that I made during COVID, a uh, great guy. Some of you have met Matthew. I've had him backstage in some of my challenges. Um, he recommended the book Content Based Networking to me. I listened to it." thought, yep, this is a fantastic book. It's a fantastic system. And I've also recommended it to a number of you, actually helped a couple of you walk through it and implement it. And so uh, I've been looking forward to this conversation and uh, the opportunity to introduce this guest here today uh, for us to talk to. So uh, I'll do that momentarily. Catherine, what have I forgotten? Certainly there's something. I think you covered it. I think that's it. All I right. should have a checklist, though, so it gets <laughs> a little more should. professionally. Yeah, you know, if uh, if this were an airplane, we'd be in danger all the time. I think without any yeah, checklist, I'd pay a little but, more uh, attention maybe if it were an airplane. <laughs> well, that's a good point. Yeah. I don't, if we crash here, I don't think it's going to hurt quite as bad. No. All right. Well, with that, I think it's time to introduce our guest. I want to have this conversation here. So, um, our guest today is an entrepreneur, a founder, and a podcast host. His story is filled with serendipity and driven by a desire to intentionally and strategically generate serendipitous intersections. I don't know if that's actually a thing, but it sounded good as I was writing it. His work presents a new approach to building your professional network. He's the founder of Sweetfish Media and the author of Content-Based Networking. James Carberry, welcome to Context and Clarity Live. I'm so pumped to be here, Jeff and, and Catherine. Thanks for having me. It's great to it's great to have you here. Um, right after at the first time I reached out to you, your assistant said, "Oh, sorry, James is on a sabbatical right now." And I'm like, oh man, that's <laughs> that's you know timing, right? Yeah. And so I happened to reach back out uh, maybe just a few weeks ago, actually, and uh, and your assistant said, "Great timing, he's back from his sabbatical." <laughs> And, uh, and he'd love to do the show. So thank you very much for, for, uh, coming back first of all, and for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Uh, this, this is going to be really fun. Sabbatical is nice and refreshing, but I love talking about this stuff. So I'm pumped to, pumped to be hanging yeah. out with you. Um, I have a question about your sabbatical. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just, you just inspired me just to tell everybody I'm on sabbatical. <laughs> You're working. <laughs> well, I mean, tomorrow I will tell everybody uh, I'm on sabbatical, and I'll be, but I'll be here tomorrow too. But you know what? Uh, except for this, I'm on sabbatical. I love it. It's it's a great it's a great excuse. For... It sounds more like academic than um, you know vacation or taking yeah. a diet from uh, podcast appearances. It's nice to put your out of office email and just say, "Hey, I'm on sabbatical, and I'm not going to read this email." So if you want to want me to see it, I'm deleting all my emails until this date. So email me again. And you it's, you it's deleted great. them even, so you didn't have to read yeah. them when you got back. Yep. Wow. That was, that was one of the things I learned from Michael Hyatt. If you're uh, going on sabbatical, just tell people when you're out of office, hey, I'm not, I'm deleting all these emails. So email me again if you, if it's something really important. I love that. <laughs> I, I do too. And I, some of you have heard me tell this. I had a client years ago that, you know, high profile person in charge of a lot of things and had a lot of people that they had to answer to. And he always said that the first email request that he got, he would delete because if it was really important, they would email again. again. (laughs) Now you have, I've never tried to implement that. Yeah. Now you have all these automation platforms that automatically send 18 follow-up emails. So it's, it's, it's getting crazy out there, but I, I definitely, I definitely get it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, um, again, great, to, great to have you here. Uh, we're we are pumped as well. And uh, as I said at the beginning, your book is content based networking, which is um, on one level is all about building relationships. So maybe maybe that's where we start the conversation. Yeah. Why are relationships so important? 
Yeah. So uh, for for those of you that have uh, read or listened to the book, uh, you know, the story that I share early in the book that uh, there was there was one relationship in my early 20s that changed the entire trajectory of of my life. And so um, when I was, I think, 22 or 23 years old, um, I got the opportunity uh, to go to to uh, I, we won this like sweepstakes through Altel, an old phone company. And so I didn't even win it. My roommate's brother-in-law won the sweepstakes. And uh, the sweepstakes said that um, you can take you and nine of your friends to a professional football game of your choice. And so I was one of the nine friends that got to uh, they got to tag along for this incredible experience. And so we took a private jet to New York City. We watched the Giants play the Cowboys. We were in a suite right next to Jerry Jones. Barry Sanders, if for football fans out there, Barry Sanders was waiting for us as we got off the the private jet in New York City. And he, you know, went, you know, we got to hang out all over New York City throughout the day. And then that night we watched the game with Barry in that in that suite. And so just this incredible experience. But the thing that changed my life about that experience was a guy named Jeff. And so Jeff was with us the entire day. I just assumed he worked for Altel. I didn't really know, you know, why Jeff was there, but he was there making sure that all of the logistics happened right. So, okay. When the, when the plane lands, the, you know, the, the limo bus is going to be here waiting on them. And then he arranged the police escort and all that stuff. And then he made sure that, you know, we didn't have to like walk far from any place that we ate in, you know, in uh, New York City. Like it was, it was just really well planned. And Jeff was the reason for that. And so I hit it off with Jeff throughout the day, ended up talking about faith and family and work and all this stuff. And uh, we had an extra ticket to the game that night. And so he joined us for the game, continued the conversation there. Well, we, we parted ways. I didn't honestly think I'd ever see Jeff again. But the uh, we swapped contact info, and a few months later, he ended up reaching out and uh, and asking if I would consider moving to Orlando, Florida, where I live now, um, to uh, to run the help run the helicopter division of his logistics company. So it turns out he didn't work for Altel; he was a small business owner owned a owned a transportation logistics company, and uh, and so he asked me to uh, come come out and help him run uh, the helicopter division of his company focused on servicing uh, the NASCAR client base. So uh, so I said yes, I prayed about it for a few days and, and ultimately decided I wanna move from Oklahoma to Orlando and uh, took him up on his offer. And so for three years, I worked for Jeff and uh, I got to put Jeff Gordon on on helicopters and got to hang out with John Cena and Waterburgers after the Super Bowl and like all kinds of crazy experiences. Um, and uh, and I met my wife here in Orlando. So uh, shortly shortly after I quit working for Jeff, I started uh, really pursuing entrepreneurial ventures. But I never would have done that if it weren't for Jeff's influence in my in my life for three years. Working for an entrepreneur ultimately inspired me to pursue entrepreneurship. So literally, that single relationship with Jeff changed everything for me. Fast forward a few years, and. Uh, you know, I, I look back on that relationship with Jeff and it's, and, and it's fantastic. It was awesome. It was very serendipitous, but I thought if that one relationship could change the entire trajectory of my life, what if we could be more thoughtful and intentional about reverse engineering relationships that we know can push us further in our career, push, push our businesses further. And, uh, and so that's ultimately what led to the, the strategy that we're going to be talking about today, content-based networking and, and how we use content collaboration to meet the exact people that we know we need to connect with and that we want to be friends with so that we can, you know, pursue our goals and dreams. Yeah, I, I love that story. And, and just to be clear for everybody in the audience, the Jeff that he's talking about was not this Jeff. It's, we got <laughs> yeah. two different Jeffs in, in, in the, in the conversation. Jeff. Yeah, yeah. But um, you, you mentioned serendipity, and I mentioned serendipity in in the intro, uh, which that that's one thing that caught my eye or my ear as I was listening to the book because I I think back across my career and go yeah there's there's an awful lot that I that I owe to quote unquote serendipity, mm -hmm. and I love I love that idea of trying to figure out is there is there a way that fast track it isn't the right isn't the right way but but right word but to be strategic yeah and and maybe accelerate yeah. some of these serendipitous experiences and so you've come up with this framework and i yeah. love it yeah um, 
so it's so funny to me, Jeff. So many, so many folks, um, especially as I as I learn more about, it, we're actually building a, a podcast studio here in Orlando or the west side of Orlando, and so um, you know, just learning more about your audience and you know, uh, architects and the architect I'm working with here in Orlando. Uh, I'm I keep I'm picturing him in my mind as we're as we're having this conversation, uh, but I think folks like my architect. Um, they they go to things like Chamber of Commerce. I don't know if, if he actually does, but uh, Chamber of Commerce, local events, things like that. And that's kind of the the I guess the standard or or the traditional way to go about building strategic relationships is you go somewhere to a setting like that, and you hope that you end up connecting or meeting with somebody that is you know that that can be of that can be benefited by something that you do by your architecture expertise. And I just think like as I've thought through the the more traditional ways of building relationships, uh, this approach of instead of just sitting back and hoping that the right person comes to an event like that or or that you happen to meet you know through somebody else, um, proactively kind of taking the bull by the horns and 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 proactively making those relationships happen by simply trying to collaborate with them on a piece of content that you create. Um, I just I, I'm I'm convinced that that it is a much better uh, approach than than what uh, a lot of folks out there are doing. So let's take that and run with it for a minute. You're you're working with an architect right now, and you see them doing what probably an awful lot of people in our audience do. Um, you know, I'm going to raise my hand. Been there, done that. Yeah. Um, you, using the same methodology, right? And it's it is definitely a relationship based business. Yeah. Um, I was on a panel discussion earlier today and I said, I don't see a time where it's not um, a relationship based business. So you're working with this architect. How would you coach them to do things differently? What would you say yeah. to him or her about um, maybe implementing the content based networking yeah. framework? So, so for him in particular, the reason that I got referred to him, which I, th I think his main business development strategy is probably what a lot of folks on the call are are doing, which is word of mouth, right? Like you do really great work, exactly. exceptional yep. work, yep. and then the people that you work with tell you about, you know, and, and so I met this guy through my general contractor, which I'm sure is a very common thing to get, uh, to get introductions through folks like that. Um, and so the reason I got introduced to this guy is because we're doing something pretty creative with the space. It's not just a, it's not a standard building where we're, at, we're in it right now with the city because it's very much not a standard building. We're going to have like a go-kart track out back and a lazy river running through the building and podcast studios that have different elements and a, and a movie theater room and all punch of, like bunch of crazy stuff. That so, actually sounds pretty standard for, for uh, Orlando though. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> right. We're trying to com compete with the mouse over here. But yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so I would say the reason I got recommended to this guy was because he tends to really gravitate to creative projects like that. He's a great outside the box thinker. He just gravitates toward that. And so with him, I mean, at least based on the relationship I've had with him so far, I, I don't think that he necessarily needs to live in Orlando for me to work with him. A lot of the work he's done uh, has been done virtually. Now he's helped, you know, he went down to city hall the other day with me and helped meet with some of the people at the city planning commission. And, and, and so that stuff, obviously he can't do if I were to live somewhere else, but I would look at him and say, if you want to do these creative projects, um, I would, I would start some sort of a show that positions you to interview uh, creative entrepreneurs that have that have that have have a successful business um, and would likely be wanting to do something in in real estate if they're not already doing something in real estate uh, that is creative. And so finding people um, in, in whether it's in your city or even nationally, I would probably encourage him to try to you know find a niche that allows him to reach out to people all over the country. Um, and, and find folks that are speaking at conferences, talking about like interesting stuff they're doing from a real estate perspective, or just people that have interesting businesses that could lend itself to like, Hey, you need something, uh, you need something physically designed to be able to execute on a lot of the vision that you're sharing. So that's a direction I would go with him, uh, if he had in, any interest at all in, in, uh, in doing this kind of stuff. 
And, and you mentioned show. Does it have to be a a, a podcast? And, no, and for those those that are that are watching or listening right now, um, so I mentioned that James is the founder of Sweetfish Media, which is a podcast first media company. Yeah. Um, so that naturally comes out of your mouth first, yeah. of course. But yep. but there are other ways to to do it, aren't there? Yeah, totally. So so it's you know for those that haven't read the book or listened to the book. Uh, essentially this this idea is based in content collaboration and so i do a lot of content collaboration by asking people to be on one of the podcasts that we produce but you could easily build these kind of relationships by reaching out to somebody and saying hey i'm writing an article for my blog and i'm highlighting you know three creative entrepreneurs that are in this space I would love to jump on a, you know, 15, 30 minute call with you to talk through some of the, you know, this particular project that you're working on so that I can highlight you in my blog post. Uh, you could do it with, you know, a video series that you're doing for YouTube. Um, I, I just gravitate toward podcasting one. It's easy to jump on and, you know, you can, you can repurpose the content like, like y'all are doing really, really well. Um, you can use it for video. You can use it on an audio only podcast app. But yeah, you could you could do it with a blog post. You could do it with a research report. You could say, "Hey, I'm I'm compiling research uh, for creative entrepreneurs, and I'd love to jump on a call and ask you, you know, a, a list of five or ten questions. Would you be up for it? Uh, I'll make sure to share the research with you, you know, after I've you know had my 100 phone calls with creative entrepreneurs or you know whatever. So it's really the the bigger idea is come up with a piece of content that you can create that forces you to collaborate with the exact people that you want to build relationships with. That way you're building relationship, not on a, Hey, I'm an architect and you should hire me kind of level. You're, you're building the relationship on something that is valuable to them. Like they're getting featured in a piece of content that they can then use in their own marketing. Um, and, and so it, it positions you as someone that wants to add value to them, even though it's completely disconnected from what you do for a living. Yeah, I I love that approach because it's you know there's there's so many levels to that. It's we're collaborating, we're building this relationship, we're providing value to you, uh, you know the person that we're collaborating with in, in being featured uh, through through the process. I mean there's there's so many so many different layers to that um, that you know it's it, as we were saying before we went live again, or, or again, before we went live was, uh, you know, nobody likes, nobody likes to be sold mm -hmm. or sold to, right? You don't like the call, the cold call. You don't like the cold email, you know, all those things are, are my, my pet peeve. I'm on, I'm on LinkedIn a lot as well. The pitch slap. Oh, absolutely. Three times a day. What, what's, what's the pitch slap? The pit slap is when, pit. when someone, someone connects with you on LinkedIn and mm -hmm. six seconds after you accept the connection, oh, yeah. you get a sales pitch in your, in your DM. So we, we call yep. that the pitch slap. Yep. I like that. Yep. Yeah. All the time. And if, actually I got one today that didn't even wait for the pitch slap is just slap <laughs> <laughs> or, or just pitch, I guess. <laughs> it was, what, it was right what you, the request. What do you do with those people? Do you delete them? After they do that, or do you answer um, them? I usually, you? I usually let the the first pitch slap slide, but there's all this automation software now. So if they just keep like hounding me, I it's usually I know it's just a bot. It's software. It's not even them doing it. And so I'll usually just block them if if they send two or three messages that are completely irrelevant to me and have zero interest in like trying to build an actual friendship. <laughs> uh, they're just trying to sell me their web development services or whatever. Uh, I'll just mm -hmm. I'll just un unconnect with them um, and and block them. Yeah, yeah. And and so to be clear for everybody out there, I mean, we're talking about essentially the opposite of that. Uh, yeah. Right. I was gonna say that's the opposite of making friends. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And Chris, it looks like Chris Novelli had a, had a good question. What are some different ways to find these people um, that you want to collaborate with? And I, I would say, Chris, that one of the, some of the things that we've done in our company for our customers, and then just some of the things that I've, I've done personally, um, I'll find people that are speaking at conferences or um, that, that tends to be a good one. So, so for in our business, we try uh, we try to connect with B two B marketing leaders. Usually, it's like the VP of marketing, and it's at a 
SaaS company, a software company, usually between a hundred to a thousand employees. And so if you, if uh, so I can go and look at industry conferences that are specifically for B2B marketing leaders. Um, and I can look and see like, okay, who is speaking at that conference that matches my ideal buyer. And I'll literally just reach out and say, Hey, I see that you're speaking at, you know, you know, marketing profs event. Would you be up for basically taking the talk that you're going to do there and sharing it with our listeners on B2B growth? I think it would be really interesting. That solves a couple problems. One, they don't have to prepare something new. They're already putting in a lot of prep to speak at that conference. So they've got something quality to say whenever I ask them to be on B2B growth. Um, not everybody obviously is speaking at conferences. That's just one way to do it. The other way to do it is just doing very granular searches on LinkedIn and finding like, okay, if I want VPs of marketing in the computer software industry at companies with a hundred to a thousand employees, you can type all of that into LinkedIn and it will spit out, okay, these are the people that you, uh, the, that you want to know. Um, really anybody can do that. The, the, the thing that I've found is when I, I used to do a lot of more blanket messaging. And so I would send a very vague, I try to be very brief when I reach out to people, but I, it would be a pretty vague message. It would, hey, hey, so-and-so um, would love to have you as a guest on B2B Growth. Is that something you'd be interested in? And then that was it. And that did pretty well. I mean, I, I, I would say that a lot of people uh, still responded to that. I've noticed over the years, as, as more people have started using this approach, you need to be a little bit more personalized. So when you go to LinkedIn, you find the exact people that you want to connect with. Maybe it's based on city. Maybe you only work with people in your area. Whatever the criteria is, start start reaching out to them and go to their website. Like try to do a little digging online. Like there's a lot of stuff you can find out about people in a in a non creepy way just by googling their name, and just find a connection point, um, and and in incorporate that into the message. It doesn't need mean that your message needs to be 18 paragraphs long. Like people are not going to, to respond to that typically, but if you can find a point of connection and a reason why you think they'll have something to add to the content that you're producing more often than not, people are going to say yes. You, it's extremely flattering when you, when you ask folks to contribute to what you're trying to create. So, uh, hopefully that helps, but yeah, LinkedIn, conference speakers. Um, what are some other things uh, we've done? Um, I'll, one of the things early in the life of Sweetfish, we would go through all of the Inc. 5000 companies and I would have a VA on Upwork that would just like, hey, I would say, hey, find all the VPs of marketing at companies with more than 50 employees or 100 employees from, from, company, from this Inc. 5000 list. And they would, you know, you'd have that built for um, I don't know, it's like seven bucks an hour or something. And, uh, and then you just go through and, Hey, I noticed that you were on the Inc 5,000 list. I'd love to share part of your story on B2B growth. Would you be up for it? And so that's another, another way to do it, but you can get really creative, um, knowing your niche. I think being focused on a niche, the fact that we know that VPs of marketing at B2B SaaS companies are our buyer helps us tremendously. So, um, you know, if, if Jeff has a product to sell to architects and he has a community for architects, him asking an architect to be on this show is it's going to be a slam dunk. Of course, he's going to be able to do it. But what I, the mistake I see a lot of people make is they don't niche, they have no focus. And so when you reach out and ask somebody, it's really hard, like, okay, but why me? Like, why would you want me to speak to this? And a lot of people tr try to make their show about their specific expertise instead of the thing that their potential buyer cares about and can speak to. So the example for us, like I've mentioned it a few times, but our podcast at Sweetfish, our flagship show is called B2B Growth. And it's a show about the front lines of B2B marketing. So it makes sense that we would talk to VPs of marketing at our, you know, at these companies that we're trying to work with to be on the show. Now, if the show was about expertise, if the show was about B2B podcasting, and I reach out to a VP of marketing that doesn't have a podcast, which is great because I want to produce their show. So I, I hope they don't have a podcast. But if I made the show about my expertise, it eliminates me from being able to ask them to be a guest because they're going to be like, I don't know the first thing about B2B podcasting. Why would I want to be on your show?
And so you have to make sure that the theme and the, the, what your show is about is aligned to something that your ideal buyer actually cares about. So the, the architect, to go back to the example that I shared earlier, the architect that I'm working with, I would say, do a show focused on sharing the stories of creative entrepreneurs. And he would say, oh, I'm, I'm not a creative entrepreneur. Well, I wasn't a B2B marketer either. I didn't know the first thing about B2B marketing when I started B2B growth. I learned a whole lot after I interviewed about a thousand people and heard them talk about <laughs> what they care about and what their pains are. But I didn't know the first thing about it until I started interviewing them. And so I got to be the journalist. I got to be curious. I got to ask a lot of questions and highlight their expertise. And, uh, and that's, that's critical for, for making the strategy work. You have to make the show about something they can speak to. Hmm. I think that's really great advice. And, and we've been kind of dancing around the actual system that you lay out in, in, um, in the book in content based networking mm -hmm. uh, what's so what, what's the what's the very first step that we have yeah. to go through in order to to really do this yeah so step one you got to get clear on your goals you've got to figure out what you're trying to do um, are are you trying to do business development so uh, is are where you're going directly to the person that is trying to to buy your you know architectural service or do you think it's a smarter play for you to build relationships with GCs? in your region because you know that you get an enormous amount of business through gcs so getting clear on what your goals are on the front end is ultimately going to inform the next step which is once you know your goal now you can determine who are the people that i need to be reaching out to and building relationships with so i've determined i'm an architect in chicago and i said hey you know i, I just know that when i can get in with a gc i get I, I end up getting jobs for the next 10 years because I do great work. This particular, these particular, these types of GCs work on really interesting projects that I love being a part of. Um, and so I'm going to focus on finding these types of GCs all over the country. And now, you know, okay, those are your people. Like now you take it and, and you're going to start finding like, okay, who are the GCs that are speaking at conferences? Who are the GCs that I, I find on, on LinkedIn or, or other platforms? I think, I, I don't even know if GCs are on LinkedIn. My GC is on LinkedIn, but they are. like finding, finding those folks and then reaching out and saying, Hey, I, I saw that you're working on a couple creative projects. You would probably see that on their website, um, in Raleigh. And I, I'm looking to highlight, you know, some, some work that creative GCs are doing would love to bring you on, you know, my, my show, the innovative GC, would you be up for it? Well, that's extremely flattering for that GC. <laughs> you want me to be on a show called the innovative GC? Of course. So you, you've now like done the groundwork of, of building that relationship. The third step is content. You know, what, what is I let the cat out of the bag there. The content for that particular example is the innovative GC. That's your wrapper. That's your mechanism that you're going to use to build relationships hmm. with the exact people that you want to build relationships with. I like that idea. Is that a real podcast yet? Because nope. somebody should take that and run with <laughs> right. it. Take idea. it and run with it. Yeah. It might be tomorrow. <laughs> uh, I kind of like to address uh, Jake's question. Would that be okay with you? Yeah, go for it. <clears throat> so he says, let's say we create content, bring in interesting parties and the ball gets rolling. Isn't it still a sales pitch after that? Just connecting doesn't necessarily bring in business. It's not, it's not ideal if you spend all this time creating content and nothing comes of it. Totally. What totally. Do do yeah. So, so you, you've got to have a system for nurturing relationships with these folks. So for us, like I'm, I'll bring them on to B2B growth and then I will stay connected with them. Uh, on on LinkedIn, sometimes I'll even connect with them on more personal platforms like Facebook. Um, I've I've done some things in the past where I, I'll look at okay, who are the last hundred people that I've had on B two B growth, and I planned a tour. I think it was 2017 or 20, 2018, where I literally hopped on a plane and I organized groups of people in different cities, and I just organized dinners. And so um, I, I was like, okay, who have I had on B two B growth from Boston? And I flew up to Boston for a day and I did a dinner and I think I did two or three dinners actually over, over the course of a couple of days. And, and so I deepened the relationship with the people that I use the podcast to build a relationship with. Another one that we've recently done at Sweetfish 
is we'll have somebody on the show and then we've built these micro communities. So they're like five to 10 person groups that meet monthly for like 30 minutes. And it's just a peer group that we as Sweetfish organize, but we'll have them on B2B growth. And then we invite them to be in one of these peer groups. So it's like, Hey, connect with other VPs of marketing at software companies that are mm -hmm. trying to solve the same problems you're trying to solve. We're going to facilitate the call once, a, once a month. And that way that, that, that keeps you in relationship with them. And what I found is that like, if you get them ingrained into a community like that, you're actually, you're truly adding value to them. They're going to want to know what you do. Like, it's not going to be any surprise to them. They, they would have had multiple email exchanges with you. Like they know you're an architect. Um, mm. And, and in those small, smaller groups, you can, some like sometimes it'll come up and you'll obviously be sharing your experiences, your perspective. Um, and, uh, and so they're going to find out that way. Once you, once I found that once you have had two or three genuine like connection points with somebody, um, and the first one could be even be a pre-interview. So like do a pre-interview first for like 15 or 20 minutes, then schedule the interview. So now by the time you're on the internet, it almost feels like you're more familiar with them by the time you get to the interview, because you've already had the pre-interview. And then if you want to invite them into a smaller, you know, a, a smaller, uh, uh, group setting, that's worked really well for us. If you want to organize dinners, so focus, you're like, Hey, the first 10 episodes that I do for my show, uh, the innovative GC, I'm going to focus on GCs in Charlotte. And I know that next quarter I'm going to fly to Charlotte and I'm going to put a dinner together. And so like, just have a strategy, have a plan, um, knowing that, the podcast is just the, or, or the content creation, what, whether it's a podcast or blog or whatever, that's just the tip of the spear. You're exactly right. The, the person that asked this question, you're exactly right. Like that, that's the way in, uh, but the relationship is, is going to be developed over time. Yeah. I, I think it's important to remember whether we're talking about content based networking or, you know, whatever system or strategy that you want. We're talking about professional services here. Again, it's yeah. based on relationships and trust. There's there's no hack or shortcut, right? Yeah. It's it, everything is a long tail, yep. um, you know, long, long view effort. So yep. um, I, I do absolutely agree that uh, it can accelerate the the no like and trust in the relationship piece of it. Yeah. But uh, as you pointed out, Jake, um, and, and you're you're uh, James, you were telling the story a minute ago about, you know, inviting someone, someone on. Um, and, you know, I'm thinking exactly that it's, if, if you are trying to sell them your services by having them on, that's not an interview anymore. No. That's a sales pitch. Yep. That's not the point of this at that's all. A, right? That's a great way to ruin your reputation and, and have them tell all their friends like, Hey, this guy's going to ask you to be on his podcast. Do not say yes. Yeah, yeah, because he's <laughs> going to pitch you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, can I ask you about the gifts? You'd mentioned giving gifts and yeah. what appropriate gifts are. And there was a book. It was a gift. What's the name of that book? That giftology. You giftology. Okay, I yeah. thought I was making actually that, that guy John Rulin. He just wrote a kids book too. So there's a kids book companion to giftology hmm. that uh, oh. that I just bought for my little boy. Great. Well, I'm going to get nice. that one because uh, what would you say are, you don't want to give too many gifts or like you said in your yeah. book, not swag, not pens and mugs and all that stuff with your logo on it. Yeah. So, so I'll show you a few of them that are actually sitting on my desk right now. So one of the shows that I was on several years ago, if you all can see this, it's just this little, um, you know, a little frame, but it's a quote that I said on her show, Unleash Possible. It's got my name on it. Um, a big, uh, a big takeaway. Oh, sorry. My camera just went off. Um, a big takeaway from John's book giftology is that you want the gift to be about them, not about you. Mm. And so what I like about what I just showed y'all, it, it, it's got her brand on it. It's got her show's name on it. I know exactly that some, I, I know when I look at that every single day on my desk, I know Samantha Stone sent that to me, even though it doesn't say Samantha Stone doesn't even say her company name. It just has her show name on there but it says mm. my name on it. And my name is the most attractive name in the dictionary to me. Like <laughs> I, I love my name and so does yeah. everybody else. Mm -hmm. And so making the gift about them, especially if you've done a cl content collaboration with them where mm -hmm. you've got 
a recorded 30 minute conversation, whether you used it for a blog post or a research report or whatever, take, take something from that and then, mm -hmm. and then craft something, uh, around it for them. There's another, here's another mm -hmm. one. This one is just a regular frame. Uh, and it's a, it's a quote of something I said, she put my headshot on it and then she's got her logo for her show right down there. So both of those are, are simple examples and they scale pretty well too. Like if, if you do, um, if you do one of these episodes a week or even a couple a month, it's pretty easy. I mean, you can, you can build the system and have a VA execute the strategy pretty easily. Mm. Um, so uh, did they come in frames? They framed it for you or did you frame yeah, it? Yeah, they framed it for me. The the one that I just showed, the one in the frame, she actually had a whole like gift, you know, is a whole gift box. Um, and so the, the framed picture was the one that stayed on my desk. But a mm -hmm. gift, something in giftology is really think through what can you get them that they will want to put on their desk. And so we invited, we invited some folks to Orlando. This was a few years ago. Um, we invited some, they were customers and some of them I think were potential customers, but we, I, I've got my giftology hat on and I'm thinking, what can I do for these folks that they will want to showcase in their home whenever they, they get back. So my wife like screen printed their pillowcase with their company's logo, like in the corner of the pillowcase. We had a, we had a wine, uh, a bottle of wine for them waiting on them in the, in the room of the uh, VRBO that we rented. And the, the wine label was their podcast cover art because they were wow. all like B2B That's podcasters. Cool. And so like doing things like that, just outside the box things, like we figured out what their favorite candy was. So you can do things in your pre-interview that like that set you up to do something that, you know, you're going to do a few weeks later, mm. but you're just information gathering. It's like, Hey, I got a few random questions that we asked to all of our guests. What's your favorite candy? What, you know, <laughs> how many kids do you have? Like what's your home like address? That. Yeah, but, <laughs> but there's even there's even software now where you can get people to like submit that mm. without it without it like going directly to you. So I, I forget the name of the tool. I just I just heard about it the other day. But mm. um, anyway, yeah, there's there, pretty, there's a lot of fun ways to do it. But I would great. definitely recommend Giftology. Jeff, what do we send out to our guests? <laughs> we give them green M&Ms. Yeah, well, we don't uh, want to ruin the surprise, James. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to <laughs> yeah. we're gonna have we're gonna to up our something. game on that. Yeah. yeah. But you know, you you, um, you said make the gift about them, which is which is really another foundational thing piece. I think of of content based networking is even the content is about them, um, not about not about me, not about us, right? Um, in yeah. that the 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 uh, quote is um, is from Dale Carnegie. Dale Carnegie, the sweetest sound to anybody's name is the sound of, or the sweetest sound to anybody's ear is the sound of their, their own name or name. something like that. Yep. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that's, that's a really great thing to point out, right? Again, yeah. we're trying to I build mean, relationships. I, I've, I've, I've got a picture of my six month old son on my desk. I've got a, I've got a, a Coke zero. I'm a big Coke zero fan. I've got a Coke zero bottle that my roommate gave me. Uh, one of our roommates gave us, it says dad on it. Um, I've got a jar of, uh, date night ideas. I've got a picture of our team from our, one of our, uh, recent executive retreats. And then I've got these two quotes from these podcasts. And, I, and so like in the most intimate space, my six month old son, my, you know, my date nights for my wife, my executive team and my company sit these things that I now, I, I now think about these people every day when I sit at my desk and I just think it's such powerful real estate um, in, in someone's world, if you can give them a gift that they actually want to put on their desk and look at every day. How about a yeah. mug? Can you, you could send out a quote from so they said on your show, <clears throat> put it yep. on a mug. Totally. Yep. That, I mean, the, the creativity is, I mean, you could, you yeah. could go. You, sure? you could do. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 We do a, um, uh, actually tomorrow is our context and clarity book club episode. So once a month we read a book and we, do a uh, book club episode of context and clarity. We may have to do giftology as one of the, uh, yeah. one of the yeah, books. John, yeah. John, John would be a fantastic person to, to do for this call too. He, he brings value every time, every time he's, uh, we had him on B2B growth a long, a long time ago and his content is incredible. Hmm. 
That's great. That's good to know. It's a good suggestion. Um, the so Christian asked a question a minute ago, and we talked about this uh, earlier a little bit as well. Um, oh, pop, there you go. What's the role of humor while creating content? Um, yeah. There, there in in the architecture world, um, there, and of course, I think it, it depends on your client, right? But there can yeah. be, um, you know, it's, it's professional services. It's, it's yeah. professionals providing services. So, are, is it okay to joke around yeah. or have a sense of humor? I, I think so. I mean, I'm a millennial, um, and so. <laughs> Uh, to, it's like hardwired into my DNA to like, write Like I talk, um, and not try to be stuffy. Um, I, I, we just had a, our, on our leadership team meeting earlier this week, uh, somebody mentioned wanting to start a committee. And I was like, if you ever say the word committee again, I'm going <laughs> to run out of this room. Um, so I, 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 I personally detest stuffiness, anything that sounds stuffy or overly professional, um, you know, it, it, and even, you know, we sell a professional service, right? A podcast production service, but I just think humans are humans. And, um, you know, uh, I, I think, uh, y'all do a fantastic job, even just facilitating this conversation of, of just being real and, 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 uh, people that like, you don't need to be stuffy and speak in business, business lingo to connect with someone. I think it actually sometimes hurts you, uh, whenever you do that. Uh, but I, I think the so I think the role of of humor in creating content and in relationship building is contextual, right? Like based on you. And so I am not a very funny person in settings like this. I'm not quick on my feet. I'm not like I just don't have that skill set. But when I write, uh, I I can be a little bit more thoughtful. I can think about it, and so I tend to be a little bit more comedic in my writing. But in settings like this, my wife my wife will tell you I'm just I'm not funny, and so I but I don't need to be. There are other ways to have charisma and to get people to like you. So the thing that I really, whenever I'm doing podcast interviews and doing content based networking for our business, I just go all in on curiosity, and so I'm I'm trying to ask as many questions as I possibly can to to know them better, to understand them more. And like most of the time, by the end of that call, they like me because I'm genuinely interested in them. And so it's a form of charisma. I've got a, a, my buddy, Timmy, I think I actually talk about him in the audio book. I don't know if he's in the, I don't think he's in the physical book, but I talk about him in the audio book and uh, he does a fascinating job of this. Uh, he is incredibly charismatic and it's not because he's funny. It's because he is, is just so warm and friendly and vulnerable. He presses into vulnerability like crazy. So he'll be on a he'll be on a call with a podcast and he's like, oh my gosh, you wouldn't believe what happened to me this morning. My my wife, you know, stubbed her toe. And so I'm having to da -da 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 -da. and and he's just going all in on like the the drama of his morning leading up to this podcast interview, but it tears down a wall, it gets people super comfortable talking to him. And they end up, he's a children's book author and they end up wanting him to write a kid's book for them, uh, by, by the end of the process. So there's all kinds of like, there's, there's different ways to inject charisma into this strategy, this approach humor, certainly one of them. I just, unfortunately don't have that gift. <laughs> well, I think well, Christian thinks you do because he really liked, he's the one who really liked the introduction. He thought that was yep. pretty funny. Yeah, yeah, I can, yeah, I can be a little more funny written, but, but, uh, but, but definitely not when I'm doing podcast interviews. But it, it reminds me, I want to point this out to everybody that's listening too. that I mentioned before I was on a, on a round table, um, show earlier today. And one of the other people, other guests on the round table was Finn McLeod from SOM, Skidmore, Owings and Merrill, large international firm. And one mm -hmm. of the things that Finn said was we have to remember that we're communicating with human beings that yep. may not speak our language. Yep. And I, you know, I think that whole idea of being relatable, you know, and I always say meeting people where they are. Um, yep. I, I think that's, that's really, uh, really important. Jeff, have you, ever, have you ago, ever heard of, um, have you ever heard of charisma on command? It's a YouTube channel. Charisma on com command. Yeah. It's fantastic. I, I mean, they've got a whole that. course and like you can buy the course, but, um, they basically break down really famous charismatic people. So they'll do a rock on, or they'll do an episode on like, I say episode, they'll do a video on 
um, something that the rock did, like how the rock interacted with Jimmy Fallon. And like, they'll break down. These are the seven things that the rock did that you can also do to be more charismatic. So if folks are interested in this, but they're a little bit insecure, like, ah, I don't know, like doing, having these conversations with people around a piece of content I'm trying to create, like, uh, I would for sure suggest that, that folks go check out the charisma on command YouTube channel. Cause there is a right. wealth of, sure. of wisdom. Definitely wisdom checking that out. Um, I want to share wisdom. Jefferson's comment. Cause I think he learned something mm-hmm. here. It says, Hey James, I read your mission to see, to see 400,000 kids in foster care, have a gospel centered home available to them. And I'd love to feature you on our podcast purpose and play studio up for it. <laughs> yes. Resounding. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jefferson, that was we perfect. will uh, very good example. That was, yes, that was I Jefferson. That. We'll uh, we'll hook you up via email. <laughs> James at sweetfishmedia.com. There you go. James there at sweetfishmedia.com. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it, a, a minute ago, you said lean into vulnerability, and I just had a flashback because our the book that we'll discuss tomorrow for book club is Dare to Lead by Brene yes. Brown. And <laughs> lean into vulnerability. She says that about 7,000 times yep. in, in that book. So um, it's a nice uh, It's wild how disarming perhaps. it is. I mean, um, it, 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 I think it, yeah, uh, I could go on. Obviously, you guys are coming at, covering it with, with, you know, the book, but it really is wild. But I say, I say that about Timmy, my friend who, you know, really leans on that in his interviews, because it's different than what I do. I don't necessarily like I admire him for for doing that. But that's not my go to my go to is curiosity. Timmy would tell you he's not as good at curiosity. Like he he errs on the side of like talking about what he does more. And so he knows to counteract that to like, make it so people actually like him because he knows he has a natural tendency toward talking about his projects and the kids books he's working on. He's like, Oh man, I got to counteract that by leaning on something else that I'm naturally really good at, which is vulnerability. So it's, it's just like really a, it's a self-awareness game, like knowing yourself and knowing uh, what it is that allows you to, you know, ask your closest friends, like, what is it about me that makes you want to hang out with me over and over again? Um, and, and then you can just start proactively pressing on those things that have already worked for, you know, for you to build relationships with the folks that are closest to you. Yeah, that's, that's really great. The, it, and I, I just realized we've made it to the top of the hour. So we're going to be um, conscious of everybody's time here, but maybe, maybe, um, one thing I wanted to touch on is this idea, and, and maybe we've touched on it a little bit already, but you talk about um, giving more than you take. Mm-hmm. And I also think, you know, we're talking about building relationships. So I think that's an important concept. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, to me, it, it just makes, it makes a lot of sense. Like um, that you, like people want to know the person that is always is trying to figure out how to give and you tend to ignore the phone call for uh when when the person that is always asking you a favor um or always wants to borrow your truck to because they're moving or you know like you tend to ignore those phone calls and so i think in that translates to how we do business like the the folks that you want to work with that you the gcs that you want to refer you business or you know whatever um those folks want to be around you because you've added value to their life. Not, and, and, and don't confuse me here because the way that you add value is the way you make a living. Yes. Like that's one way that you add value to people by, by doing brilliant architectural designs. Like I see the work that my architect has done for me and it's fascinating, but had he tried to reach out to me three years ago before I had, you know, like, I would have, I would have, I wouldn't have had a need for it. Like I would have discounted him had he tried to sell me on what he does three years ago. Um, and so, uh, he, he would have had to figure out how to add value to me in a different way because, um, now he's, he's going to make a lot of money on our project. Uh, but I, I would like, it's, it's because it took, you know, it would have taken time for him to build a relationship. Um, and, uh, and, and until I was ready for what he needed. And so I think there's a big old market out there for, for everyone on this call. Uh, but not everybody is ready to buy. I think there's a, a statistic from zoom info or, or I forget where it is, but like less than, I think it's like less than 3% of your market is ready to buy at any given time. And so 
97% of the folks that you, that you get on your show, it, it work it is the case with me. It's the case with Timmy, whenever he's interviewing purpose-driven entrepreneurs to get them to, uh, to, to talk so that he can see if they want to write a kid's book, only, a, only a small percentage are ready right now, but the game is building those relationships over time because they will eventually be ready. And with a service like professional service, like architecture, if you're going after the right folks, they're eventually going to have an opportunity to, to work with you. And so uh, it'll be a test of your ability to build a genuine relationship with, with folks um, to know whether, you know, when it is time, you're the person they think of. Yeah, uh, that's, that's a really, that's a really great lesson. And, and uh, you know, as we wrap this up, I think, you know, for everybody out there is we're, you know, what we're talking about is building relationships. Um, you know, here, here's, here's a system. Um, that's a great point that, you know, if, if you, if you could identify the 3% right now, it'd be gold, right? But yeah. that's really hard yeah. to do. Good, good luck finding any strategy that's gonna, you know, like do Google ads, like people Googling, I need an architect in Chicago, like sure. run Google ads. Like that's, that's gonna, that's about the closest I found to like finding really high intent opportunities. The rest yeah. of this stuff, it just, it takes time. Yeah. But then I think you've got the question too, is are those the right people? You know, back to the very beginning of, of your framework there, you've got to have that specific strategy yeah. in place. And if you're running those Google ads, you may find a hundred people, but are any of them those people that are your people you as you described them? Yep. Yeah. That's yep. Great. Exactly. And, and I don't, I just don't want I just don't want to cede control. So I, I want to be in control of the network that I'm building and the relationships that I'm building. I don't, I don't want to depend on, uh, I, I don't want to depend on outside factors. And so when I design a show, because I know like right now, another example of me executing the strategy in my own life. So we're, we're about a 35 person company. We will likely be, uh, we'll likely have probably, I'd say 50 to 60 employees by the end of this year. And we're growing really fast. And I, I need to be around people that have built 10 to $100 million companies. That's what I aspire to do. I want Sweetfish to be a $100 million company in 10 years. But I currently am not influenced by anybody that's operating a company at that level. And so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm right now trying to figure out like, okay, B2B growth is great for B2B marketers, for doing biz dev, for Sweetfish. It's working. We've got other people on the team that are running that now. Do I need to start a show called you know, 10 to 100, where I literally just go after folks that have built companies that are in the 10 to hundred million dollar range and fly to them, maybe do one or two episodes a month, fly to them, record with them on site, build relationship. Um, because I'm leaning into being curious. I'm, I, I know that if I do that, they're going to walk away from that experience going, yeah, this is a guy that I'm, that I might want to keep hanging out with. And so from a mentorship perspective, that's great, but those people are also probably pretty great candidates to work with us, uh, and, and have our team produce a show for them too. So anyway, I, I share that as an example of like, I'm continuing to execute this strategy and, and it evolves over time. Like we've now got other people on our team that are doing it on the sales side of our business, but there are other things that I personally aspire to. I need mentors that have achieved the goals that I want to achieve. And so I'm going to use content-based networking, uh, to, 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 to reach that end. Are you going to do that, James? I think so. We're, we're, uh, I, I'm going back and forth on whether I want to wait to, to start it until after we get the studio built. Uh, but uh, if, if I, especially if I'm going to them, I'm like, yeah. eh, I don't really need the studio built anyway. So right. Um, I'm also trying to, I'm in a season of my leadership right now where I'm going, do I need to add one more thing? Or are the three or four yes, things? Yes, the answer is always yes, James. Yes. yes. <laughs> so anyway, that's there's a little peek into my brain and what what's going on. Yeah. In the, in the oh, good luck with that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I I really appreciate that because uh, I'm going to go back to the book just real quickly. Um, that's one of the things I enjoy most about the book is you talk about the things, but here's here's a concrete example. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so what you just shared is a is a really great you concrete example. And, um, and, and it's real, it's really yeah. real, you know, Hey, I've got to consider this and I've got to consider that, but you know, my goal is, and my, and the strategy to get there might be this. And yeah. I think all of us can, can appreciate that. I mean, we, we all have to deal with real life. So, 
so thank you for sharing that. And, and thanks for the book. Again, I recommend it all the time. Uh, I told James uh, before we went live, I sent the book to my son. Uh, many of you know about my son. He is uh, an aspiring sports broadcaster. And he has this idea of, of interviewing sports broadcasters. Like, I've got a book yes. for you. Yes. Um, it's, 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 it's that I model. wanted to be a sports broadcaster growing up. So that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's on his way. So uh, that's, that's what he's so studying cool. in school. But uh, I, I was so just cool. telling my daughter who's 17 and she doesn't know what she wants to do or how she's going to meet anybody who can help her do it. So I was saying, well, first you have to set your goal and yep. then think about who you need to get to know and you know, all that yep. stuff. You can write some blogs or something. Yep. So one I'm, of, I'm one getting her things, to do it. Too. One of the things, Catherine, that I've, I've mentioned this to several people, we actually started a couple local shows, um, one called Orlando Success, another one called Boston Success. We were going to, I was going to start a whole like local media army of doing shows like this. But if it's more general like that, she's like, I don't know what I want to do. But I know that talking to successful people in the city that I live in is probably a great way to figure out what I want to do. So yeah. just ha have her do something that's more locally focused. It doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily have to be on a niche, but focus on the region or the city and then position yourself to say like, Hey, if anybody has succeeded in the city, I want to talk to them on the show. And the great thing about local shows is you can do what I plan on doing with 10 to 100, like, except you don't have to get on a plane. Like they're already in your city. So like, yeah. Hey, let's, let's meet up somewhere and we can record the conversation live. And then naturally there's going to be much deeper connection uh, because they're going to be together in person. Awesome idea. I'll go tell her that at dinner. <laughs> you, you know what I would do? I was actually thinking about this because, again, I sent this book to my son. Um, I was thinking about not only for our community, right? Okay, how do we, how can architects benefit from this? But, you know, what what advice would I give to a young person? So maybe it's your daughter who's 17. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's my son that's um, that's 19. And I think if... Th thinking in terms of maybe books and advice, yeah. I think what I would do is I would give them content-based networking, James Carberry, obviously, and uh, the Proximity Principle mm -hmm. by Ken Coleman, um, which is which kind of combines the things that you were just talking about. Proximity is, you know, everybody's going to have to read that, but yeah. but it's you know what what are what are the things that'll help you achieve your goal that are within the proximity of where you are right now. Yes. Um, I think those are both brilliant books and um, great suggestions maybe for, uh, for teenagers and young people as, as well as everybody in our community. Love that. Well, James, this is uh, another show. I know, I know it's been a great conversation. I know it's been a great topic. I know it's been a great guest when I feel bad about having to wrap the show up. <laughs> so, so thank you. Thank you for being so generous with your time and uh, thank you for the book and, and all the examples. Again, the real world examples I think are, are maybe the, the best of it all, but, but thanks so much for joining us today. Awesome. Thank you both for, for having me. Uh, your, your uh, community is super cool. I'll, I'll definitely be telling my architect about it soon. <laughs> Yeah, we, we would love to, uh, we'd love to have him as part of this community. And, and for anybody that's out there, if, if this is, if you're new to context and clarity, um, we do, we have these conversations, not an interview type conversation every day, but every weekday we have these context and clarity conversations all week. We craft the topics around what we'll talk about with our guests on Thursday. So, um, go over to Facebook to the Entree Architect Community Facebook group. It's a community just for architects. Uh, it's a safe place for architects to talk about architect stuff, about the business of architecture. So you're invited over there, become a part of this community. Um, and to all of you out there in our audience, I say this every week and I mean it every week. Thank you um, for being part of this community. Thank you for making context and clarity a thing because without you, Without making context and clarity a thing, we probably would not be having this conversation with James today. So uh, thanks for making this possible. Um, my wish for everybody out there is that uh, you will take a little bit of time this afternoon, this evening, whatever time of day it is for you. Breathe a little bit, relax a little bit, find some way to rejuvenate because we're going to do this all over again tomorrow. Tomorrow will be our context and clarity book club discussion where we discuss Brene Brown's Dare to Lead. 
So join us for that tomorrow, 4 p.m. Eastern, all the same places you're finding this conversation right now. Um, we'll be live with uh, our, our uh, book club discussion tomorrow. So everybody, thank you. I appreciate all of you. Catherine, as always, thanks for co-hosting this with me. James, thank you again for joining us. And uh, I hope that I'll see everybody out there somewhere sometime soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye, y'all.